Hi everyone. In my last video, I showed you how to pick up the heel flap stitches along a garter edge border. And I thought I would show you a couple of my other favorite sock knitting techniques. Today, I'm going to show you the cast on that I like to use for all of my top down socks. And that's the German twisted cast on, but I like to do it in rib or in pattern. So I'm gonna show you today how to do it on a two by two rib pattern, but it's very easy to adapt. You'll know which one is the knit and which one is the purl, and you can adjust it for any cast on that you like to do, whether it's a one by one, a two by two, three by three, whatever you may have in your pattern or whatever you may want to use. A couple of things that I like about this cast on, number one, it's really stretchy. So it gives you plenty of room to comfortably put the sock on and take the sock off. The other thing that I really like about it is it gives a nice finished edge to the fabric. So if you're looking at the fabric, you can see because it's in pattern, you don't even really notice the cast on edge. Had I done this all in knit or just a regular long tail cast on, you'd see a ridge at the top of the sock. Not only is it not as stretchy, but then you have that hard edge. So this one gives you a nice clean look. It just seems to go seamlessly right into the fabric and then it makes something that's really nice and stretchy for you to use. So let's jump right in. I'm gonna be doing this today on uh, Magic Loop. That's my preferred way to knit socks. The cast on would work the same whether you were using DPNs or if you were using nine inch circular. So you can substitute any needle that you like in here. I'm gonna be using, uh, again, this Woolens and Nosh self-striping sock yarn. This is in the colorway swizzle. If you're new to knitting socks, I really enjoy self-striping sock yarn. It allows you to have something that's really fun and patterned without having to do a lot of work. So I'll include a link down below to a few of my favorite shops for self-striping sock yarn. I like Woolens and Nosh, Kirby Werby is a great one, Turtle Pearl, Tumbleweed. Uh, so I'll make sure you have those links in case you want to check out some of that yarn. So I've got my working yarn over here. Um, one comment to make, since I am using self-striping sock yarn today, this is a really long color repeat, and I want to make sure that I have enough yarn. So I'm going to end up with socks that are fraternal twins, but not identical twins. I'm not going to worry about where I'm starting in the sock or in the stripes, but I am going to try and make sure that I start in the middle of a stripe so at least the patterning is the same while the colors won't be exact. So what I've done is folded my yarn in half, and if you look at the bottom, I've got, well, I did have it folded in half. Let's try this again. So I've matched up the ends of the two stripes. I've got my dark blue and my light blue, and I've just folded that yarn, and I'm going to start exactly in the middle of that stripe. So let me get this together off camera, and I will be right back with you. So I've got my yarn folded in half. This is the halfway point. If you're not using self-striping sock yarn, whatever tail you would normally use, just go ahead and use that. I typically give myself a full arm's length, so anywhere from four to six feet. I've got plenty of yarn. I'm not gonna worry about getting my tail in exactly the right spot and not wasting an inch of yarn. I don't, I don't worry about that quite so much. So I'm going to hold my yarn like I would for a normal long tail cast on in my left hand. I have my tail hanging over my thumb and my yarn that's connected to the ball over my index finger. And I just like to make a little tent and pinch those down below. A lot of people make a slip knot. It's fine if you want to. I don't make a slip knot. I find it just a little bit bulky and especially on a project like a sweater, I find it easier to make that beginning invisible if I don't have the knot there. So instead of making a slip knot, I'm just gonna lay my needle over the top of the yarn and I'm gonna twist it towards me. And you'll see that creates a little bit of a twist. It's gonna look just like a stitch. We're gonna go into it exactly like you would for a knit, which would give you the right leg on the front of the needle and the left leg on the back of the needle. So I just loop it over, I'll show you one more time. Lay the needle on top, twist it towards you, and you've created that stitch. But again, if you prefer a slip knot, it would be very easy to substitute there. So let's go ahead and learn first how to do the German twisted cast on in knit. We'll start there. We'll do a few of those slowly. Then I'll show you the purl and then we'll do it together in the two by two pattern. This is a little bit different than the long tail. It's got a little twist in it that gives some extra 
stretch to the fabric, but it starts the same. So we're going to go over again. We've got our tail on the front, our working yarn in the back, and we're going to bring our needle underneath both loops that are over the thumb and bring it through in between and then move our thumb around. So it's a little bit tricky to get used to at first. We'll loop around the back and come back through the middle and we've made one stitch. So I'll do that again for you. We're gonna go under both, around through the middle, bring our thumb around, over the back loop, back through the middle, and pull. I'll do it a couple more times. Under both, through the middle, and we bring our thumb back around so that that loop is straightened over the back, back through our front loop, and pull. And that, that twisting around right here gives us just a little bit more leeway in the yarn or in the stitch. It makes something that's nice and stretchy. It's pretty straightforward. So we'll do it a couple more times. Under both, through the middle, bring your thumb back, over the back loop, through the middle, and we'll pull tight. Not tight, but pull firm. Under both, through the middle, bring your thumb back around, over the back, through the middle, and we're good. We'll do one more. Under both, through the middle, bring your thumb around, over the back, through the middle, and we're good. Now let's take a look at the purl. It's actually a little bit easier than the knit. There's not the thumb twisting involved, but this one we're gonna be starting with the back yarn because it's kind of the inverse of what we were just doing with the knit. To do a German twisted cast on in a purl stitch, we're going to go around both and pick up the back We're going to come around through the front of the front yarn, and it's just that simple. So around, pick up the front, and through. Around the back through the middle, pick up the front yarn from underneath, and through. We'll do it a couple more times. We're gonna go around both from the top, pick up the back, come under the front yarn, through the loop, and pull. I'll do it one more time. Around the back, pick up the back loop, underneath the front yarn, back through the middle, and we'll pull it through. So you can see when you look at them from up above, when you have a section of them together, you can see the first few look pretty flat on the front like a knit stitch, and then our last four or five stitches have kind of that purl bump in front. They look a little bit more forward like we would see that purl bump, and that's what's going to give us that really nice edge. So let's go ahead and we'll pull off everything but the first two because those were our, our initial stitch and then our knit. And we'll go ahead and do this in pattern now. So I'm gonna do two of the knits and then two of the purls, and we'll go from there. I'm gonna cast on 72 stitches, so we'll work across uh, the whole front of the sock. Feel free to fast forward a little bit if you've got this part down, but if you wanna watch with me, uh, we'll, we'll have 70 more times to practice here. So we've got our first two knit stitches. We'll now do some purls around the back. And over, I'm gonna do this a little bit more real time. If you wanna watch the slower part at the beginning, you can do that. So you can see, it's really quick once you get the hang of it. I use this cast on for anything that has ribbing. Uh, in fact, I use the German twisted cast on for just about everything at this point. But if I'm doing a sweater collar, if I'm doing the bottom ribbing of a sweater that I'm knitting top down. I use it for that. I use it for hats, mittens. It's, it's just a really nice pattern and it's easy to do 
in any pattern. So you can see here, I'm doing it in a two by two rib, but it would be just as easy to do one knit and one purl or any pattern you want. So I'm doing two knits. Now I'll do two purls. I'll do two knits. And then I'll do two purls. And we'll do this until we have all 72 stitches on the sock or on the needle. And again, once you get the hang of it, it really goes quickly. It's funny, I'm so used to it at this point. When I started the video, I did a couple of knit stitches and having to go so slowly, I actually forgot how to do the purl for a second and I had to stop and go back one more time and remember how to do it because I just do it without thinking now. It's my go-to. But I think you'll really enjoy this a lot, especially for your socks. It gives a really nice cuff. And you can see here, it's maybe a little bit more work than just doing a, a knit long tail cast on for the whole edge, but it goes really quickly. Okay, I'm going to count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21, I'm going to put a stitch marker right here so I don't have to go back and count all of these stitches all over again. When I'm casting on a, a larger number, I know this is just 72, it's not like it's 300 for a shawl or something, but I like these light bulb stitch markers so that I can put them at a point, you know, if you're casting on a large number, you could do it every 50, something like that. In this case, I'm just gonna put it halfway so that I know where to fold my magic loop cable and then I don't have to count 72 stitches all over again because I've got my first half here. So I ended on a purl. You can see the little purl bumps here going to do my knits next. So two knits, two purls. I'm getting this little nest of yarn, but that's okay. Knit, knit, purl, purl. I love all of the comments on the videos for people that are either trying this and really liking it for their socks, or if you have a different method that you like to cast on with, I'd love for you to leave a comment below and share with me what you like to do. This is one that works really well for me. I tend to be a creature of habit once I find something I really like. I substitute it in patterns. Same thing with the heel that I prefer. And that's what I love about sock knitting in particular. Once you find techniques that you like, it's really easy to substitute them in patterns. So you can do any cuff that you want. You can do any cast on. I like to knit cuff down socks with a heel flap and gusset. And so I even, I just bought a pattern the other day. It's a really pretty cable pattern that's knit for a toe up sock with a short row heel of some kind. I can't remember what the pattern had, but I'm planning on working it top down and following the chart for the cable pattern, but I'm gonna do all of my favorite techniques. So I'm gonna do my regular cuff. I'm going to use my heel flap and gusset that I like. I'll use the toe that I like, but then use the pattern to knit the sock. So in a way, you're able to really create things that are customized with the techniques that you like to knit with the techniques that you prefer the fit of. So it's something that really, it can just be so individualized, which I really appreciate about sock knitting. And socks are small enough projects that you can, you can learn your favorite techniques quickly. It's a little bit harder to learn your favorite sweater techniques when there's such a big project, you don't, you don't go through them quite as fast, or at least I don't. So I'm gonna stop and check and see how far I am. Two, four, six, So 
So I was really overzealous here. I cast on extra stitches. All right. So at this point, let me get untangled here. At this point, I have my 72 stitches cast on and I've got 36 on one side of the marker and 36 on the other. So if you were just looking for the cast on, you've got that now. If you were looking for a little bit of help getting started or you're new to Magic Loop, feel free to hang on with me and I'll show you how to get started with Magic Loop. So Magic Loop is a technique that allows you to knit a small circumference, so in this case a sock, without having to use double point needles. A lot of people are really finding they like the nine inch circulars. Some people use two circular needles. Uh, some people like four double points. Some people like three. Whatever your preferred technique is, find something that works for you. I find Magic Loop is really comfortable for me. I like the flexibility with Magic Loop of not having to have, uh, say for a hat, I might knit a hat on Magic Loop and then I don't need a 16 inch circular and double point needles or different things like that. So I like it because it keeps my equipment needs pretty low. I don't need a lot of extra notions and tools. And I find it works really well for me for socks. If you wanna knit two at a time, uh, that, that's really, it's easy to do on one or two circular needles or on Magic Loop. So to get started, I've got my stitches evenly cast on here and I'm going to fold my cable in half and I'm going to pull my cable through at the halfway point where my stitch marker is. So we'll just leave that hanging out there for now. And to get myself organized, I just fold the cable in half. So I'll come down a little bit and you can see that. I'm gonna leave my working yarn and my tail in the back and my initial cast on stitch is gonna be on my front needle. With Magic Loop, you're always gonna be working on the front needle and you're gonna be using your back needle to do the knitting. So to get started, I'm going to move my front stitches, which was my initial cast on edge, to the edge of my front needle. And you do wanna be careful here, just like anything you're joining in the round, to make sure that you don't have any twists in your fabric or in your cast on stitches. So you can see all of my cast on edge right now is in the middle. I'm good to go. I just stick my hand in and hold, hold those stitches. And then in order to be able to knit, you know, we, we can't get our needle around here. We're gonna pull the back needle through. I like to hold my cable on top of the needle. So in this case, let me just do one adjustment. I'm gonna get my tail, this is my end. It's down here on the bottom. I'm just gonna get it in the middle and out of the way. And then I'm going to make sure that my working yarn is over the top of the needle right now so that I'm ready to knit. So I like to, to get set up, I like to take my needle under my cable and insert it knitwise into that stitch. And the way I hold my hands, I hold the needle and let the cable sit on top. And the reason I like to do that is it lets me kind of hold that cable out of the way with my first couple of stitches, which I think really helps with laddering. So in this case, remember I'm gonna do a two by two rib on my sock. My first two stitches are knits. So I'm just gonna knit like normal. So I've got my working yarn coming off the back. All of my stitches are organized in the middle. Nothing is twisted. I'm going to get everything on my front needle. I've pulled my back needle through. And at this point, I'm just gonna knit. So I'm gonna go into the first stitch as if to knit. For my cast on edge, I like to pull that pretty snug, not too tight, but pretty snug. Then I'm gonna knit the next stitch. So you can see, once you get the cable in the right position, you're just knitting. You're knitting off your left needle onto your right needle, and that part is exactly the same as with any technique. Now I'm ready to purl, so I brought my working yarn to the front. I'm gonna do my two purl stitches. And again, at this point, once you're set up and ready to go with Magic Loop, you're just knitting. So you'll see, as I mentioned just a second ago, I like to keep my cable on top of my needle. I find it just helps me keep an eye on where it is and make sure I'm not pulling on anything too much. My hand starts to come over the top of it as I'm working through my stitches on the needle, which really allows me to keep that cable and keep, so the cable is where your back stitches are at the moment. It allows me to keep those two together instead of letting them stretch really far apart, which is one of the ways that you can get some big gaps 
in your fabric with magic loop. So I, I really find that to be a really helpful way to kind of keep an eye on it. I just hold it down with my hand and I don't even notice that it's there when I get going. So we'll knit and then purl. We'll go across these 36 stitches and then I'll show you what happens when you get to the end of your first needle and you're ready to turn around the other direction. You know, as, as I've been thinking about my sock knitting, I realized that I've never knit socks on double point needles. The owner of the yarn store that I was going to when I lived in Tennessee, when I will say relearned how to knit as an adult, the owner of the yarn store had written a book for two at a time socks using two circular needles. That was uh, the book that she wrote. So that's actually how I learned how to knit socks was on two circular needles, two at a time. It was a little bit overwhelming, although the pattern in her book that I started with that she taught with was for worsted weight socks, so that helps. That's definitely a nice way to try out sock knitting because you can learn all of the techniques involved in a sock, but you have fewer stitches, so they go faster, and it's bigger yarn if you're uncomfortable or nervous to start with such small needles but that's okay. So I've, I've reached the end of my working yarn and we have to do a little bit of adjusting or I've reached the end of my first needle. We have to do a little bit of adjusting to be able to turn around and go the other way. So I'm just gonna turn everything around so that my working yarn is in the back. I've just knit across and I've, I've turned everything around. So I ended here, I'm turning here so that the stitches I've just knit and my working yarn are in the back. This is my tail, we'll get it out of the way. I'll trim it later. We're gonna do the exact same thing we did before, where a good place to start is by getting your needles in the same position. So just push this cable back in. You've got your front and back needles in the same position now. Our stitches are on the bottom, the loops on the needles are on the top, working yarn is in the back. Remember, we're gonna be knitting off of the front needle onto the back. So I'm gonna pull out the back needle so that I've got cable. I find it helpful to, to put it in this position so that it, it forms this little pattern. I find that this gives my hand a place to sit in the back. You may find that you like to hold everything together, but I kind of scooch it up like this, stick my fingers in here again. That, that helps me hold on to everything and keep it from stretching out as much. And then I position my cable over the top. I come in with my needle from the underneath. And I'm just gonna knit. So I'm starting with a knit stitch again. I pull the first one, not too tight. That's another problem that, that we'll talk about later on where you can create some laddering by pulling your stitch too tight, but, but pull it snug. And I'm gonna continue in my ribbing pattern. So I've knit two. Now I'll purl two, knit two, purl two. And, and again, you'll see that once you have your needles in the right place with Magic Loop, the knitting portion is exactly the same. And you can see here with my hands, now I'm, I'm really comfortable knitting Magic Loop. I've done it for many years. This is how I knit all of my socks. Oops, I split the yarn. Let's come back. You'll see from my hands that it's really comfortable. The cables aren't really in my way at all. I'm used to feeling them in my hands. I'm doing a lot of things without even thinking about it here. Like I'm, I'm holding my needle and my cable together with my left hand so I'm not stretching anything out there. You can see I've got all the cables twisted so that it forms a nice join here. I'm not pushing them apart like that. I have them all twisted up and actually the cable wants to do that naturally. So you can see my cable is forming all those twists on its own. In my right hand underneath, I'm holding the cable and the needle together. So once, once you get the hang of it, there's a lot of little things that you can do that make it really comfortable for you. It help, helps give you a nice finished sock or hat in the end. I know some people think it's an odd choice to knit hats on magic loop, 
but I'm so used to it at this point. And then I, I don't have to have the nine inch, or I'm sorry, the 16 inch circulars. And I find it just really comfortable with my hand. You'll notice also that the way I hold my yarn, I am an English knitter. So I hold the working yarn in my right hand. Um, the way I hold my needle is down here with my thumb and my fourth finger. And it's a little bit hard to tell right now, but I, I use those fingers to swing my needle around a little bit so that my hand doesn't have to move as much. And I've totally messed something up. Let me go back. Clearly I cannot talk and knit at the same time. The first row is always a little bit tricky because you don't have enough fabric yet that your mistakes are really obvious, but I got to the end of the row and I had one stitch left when I should have had two or none. Okay, where did I make my mistake? Purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two. Oh, I think I just got to it. Sorry about that. I can't talk and knit at the same time. So again, I, I really like Magic Loop for all of my knitting in the round. I like the Chowgu interchangeable set for larger projects because it allows you, oh, look, I've done it again. Okay, we've messed up really far back here. Knit two, oh, here it is. Look, all the way back here. Okay, we'll see if we can cut this out uh, later on. If not, you're just going to watch me tink back here. Look, mistakes happen even when you're showing somebody how to do something new. Okay, give me just a second. We'll get back to that. The best laid plans sometimes just don't go how you intended. That's also what I love about knitting. A stitch is a stitch is a stitch. They're easy to take out, easy to go back. Okay, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit, purl, knit. Oh, look, it's the one on the needle right now. Okay, there was our mistake. So we're going to purl. All right, we are back in business now. You probably just heard the furnace start up in the background. Sorry if that's noisy, it should be fairly quiet now. Okay, so we're gonna finish this row. Hopefully at this point we've gotten it correct and all of our knits and pearls are in the right spot. And from here, I just continue on. So it's the exact same technique moving your needles around. I'll show it to you one more time when I get to the end of this row, in case you wanna see it one extra time. There we go. Ended on two pearls, just as we should have. So you can see at the end where my cast on was, my, my original tail, I just snugged that up a little bit. It's really easy to go in at the end and fix any loose spots. Um, I like to actually do a little bit of a duplicate stitch to close up the ribbing uh, in the end. So I finished one full round now, which is great. I usually leave my cast on tail at the beginning so that I know where I started until I finish my cuff and then I weave it in at that point and I put a stitch marker in the front. But I know where I started because my tail is always on the right at the beginning of a round. So I've knit one full round now, and we're gonna get started one more time. So again, remember your working yarn stays in the back. Right now I've got my needles oriented facing the right, and I'm gonna be knitting off of the front onto this back needle. So I'm gonna move it into position by pulling the back needle out. I get everything looped together. I've got my cable underneath my right hand needle or underneath my left hand needle, but on top of my right needle. So it's kind of sandwiched in there. And I'm going to start knitting. So this is how I would start again. I'm gonna give that just a little tug so it's nice and firm. And you're gonna go from there. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this video that shows you how to do a German twisted cast on in pattern and then get started with magic loop. I typically knit, uh, in case you're curious, I typically knit about 24 rows of the cuff that gives me about two inches. I find that that's just enough for me to get going. So give it a try. Let me know what you think down below in the comments and happy sock knitting. Bye guys.